Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Um, we're going to take a look at the surface of the sun with a little more detail today from March 24, which was yesterday. Um, the first images you're going to see here are before we dialed in with some of the new techniques we're going to use. Um, I got the Celestron telescope back in October and we already blew a power supply. The fact is you just can't get the quality in instruments that you used to get. Um, all the stuff that I bought in the 90s still works perfectly and yet the things that I buy now just don't last that long. The scope itself has done very well but to lose a power supply this quickly is, uh, is a sad commentary on the quality of stuff that we're getting now. At any rate, I went up to the scope shop and he took a look at my solar scope while I was getting the new power supply and he showed me how to better hook the the camera up and right here you can see a detached filament I believe I haven't looked at Soho or anywhere else but we couldn't see that before we began to dial in you can see the standard view here so we're going to do some light blocking techniques and uh, also with new camera settings at the end of this clip you'll be able to see how much more surface detail I can get right now and right now, there it is, right there. Um, right now, there's just not that much going on on the surface of the sun. But um, using the new camera settings and positioning the DSLR on the solar scope allows us to get what little there is much, much more clearly, as you can see here. Now, down on the lower left, we didn't even realize for the longest time there was anything there. And when we did the light blocking technique, uh, which will come up in a minute here, you'll see what happens when we use the auto function of the camera to adjust lighting when the when the light comes flooding back into the scope and it really makes uh, things visible that you wouldn't see otherwise but we're going to take some looks at looks at the surface detail here um, in a few colors and spectrums and also I learned that the hydrogen alpha spectrum is not really handled that well by DSLRs chips um, just that spectrum isn't picked up so well by the chip in the camera so the truth is that while you see really well optically with an eyepiece when you film with the DSLR the video you get has to be processed to get these kind of views that we're getting now and a lot of times it's just contrast and brightness um, and other settings that you can do I invert a lot these are inverted color channels and then I manipulate the color there on the lower left limb you can start to see that little detached prominence I guess it is. Um, I'll have to look later on today to see if that showed up on any of the larger telescopes but it was pretty cool because um, you couldn't see it before we did it and when we do the light blocking here in a second you'll see. So we're going to take a couple more views through color spectrums in inverted color channels just so you can see what the sun looked like yesterday. If you want you can compare it to what Soho and others showing you. Wow something just flew by there but that looked like it was probably a bird at distance. I didn't notice that in the edit. So here we're coming. We're just going to run down a couple more views in color here, and then we'll do do the blocking. You know, I find blue and pink really work well to bring out surface detail for some reason. Um, green and red, not so much. And this yellow works pretty well too. But when I shift all the way over into red, it's it's not the greatest view. I think really blue is the best view to see fine surface detail. And while there were some prominence yesterday, um, there's just not much going on in the sun here. And I filmed all day long yesterday um, trying to get something. At the end of the day, the chem planes were flying really high altitude, over 40,000 feet with non-persistent chemtrails. Okay, here comes the blocking. Look in the lower left. And you can see it right there, that little just stationary detached area, totally invisible otherwise. We couldn't see it, you know, optically either. Here comes another blocking, and I'm going to zoom. And right there, there's like three little areas, and you can see a little dimple on the limb of the sun that leads me to believe it's probably just a detached filament, but I'm not sure. And there it is in a different color at full speed. The previous one ran at 30%, and here we go again. We're just using our hand to do this. And there it is in pink and in, in real time. And there's another view of it. Um, at any rate, I've been telling people not to buy Mead telescopes, and I'm sticking to that. I guess a, Chinese, a rich Chinese guy bought the company, so maybe it will get better. But right now, for my money, Celestron is a much better made telescope. But it's, you know, I'm very disappointed that I lost a, a power supply that I just got brand new in October. But I'm taking some 
precautions now and running a surge protector and a really, really thick um, extension cord to do it. But anyhow, let's take a look at the lunatic moon. When I got done with solar filming yesterday, it was still in the middle of the day, which is why the moon looks this way. And uh, a lot of people get confused about how the moon moves through the sky from our apparent position. It's called field rotation. So look at the position of the moon and look where you know the little features are and you'll see what happens over the course of a day by the time it's dark and I show you the last footage here you'll see that the moon has rotated quite a bit many people get fooled into thinking that there's something wrong with this motion but we see it all the time if you simply watch for at least six hours at a time there it is rotated quite a bit after a number of hours the truth is is that the way it looks to us it apparently rotates about 90 degrees every six hours and if you want to see how that works you can look up animations online for libration uh, of the moon and generally it shows you the tilt forward and backwards and the rotation that occurs so as we went through the day here I filmed for endless hours we didn't get a single thing but I was uh, at the end of this I was trying to do an interview at the same time which I probably shouldn't have done uh, I'm not very good at multitasking in that way the uh, the chem plane started flying about midday, really high altitude. They were leaving trails that were about one or two miles long, and they were non-persistent trails um, that leave kind of a shiny look in the sky. We've had low humidity for a couple days, and so you know there was very little cloud cover. And um, the result of the chem trailing was just to give the sky this kind of shiny look. And you can actually detect it in this footage here. Um, it is daylight, and I'm not using any kind of a light filter on this shot. But uh, in a minute here, we're going to shift over to, I had filmed all the way through till it got dark. So in just a couple seconds here, you're going to see the moon rotate again because the footage is from a number of hours later. And there it is. And many times people comment, or I see them making videos when the moon looks like this, that they think there's something funny or wrong with it. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but it every day the moon rotates about 90 degrees each six hours so um, we are told that the full cycle of a moon happens over something like 18 years so the truth is to really understand what it should look like um, you'd have to look at a long cycle and of course with the clips I've done um, you understand what I think that we are absolutely not looking at the moon we have been told about um, when I look now uh, I'm trying to get it in the early phases and we spend some time looking into the dark portion to see if we can come up with anything interesting. Um, filming in spectrum, if, you, if anyone has the ability to film in spectrum, I think that's maybe a cool thing to do when you're just near a new moon and the moon's in a sliver. Um, UV or IR may be able to you know, give some new clues about what's going on, but for those of you that have watched my past clips, I think we're looking at a facade here. Um, I do not believe for a second that that is a rock in space, and I think that there's a lot of evidence to demonstrate this. And I will be working all the time to try to produce more evidence, uh, find more encoded references to this, and as I get these things, I'll put them up. But right now is the time to film the moon. We just passed the equinox all the way up to Easter. Easter is a big day. If you have the opportunity, go out and film the moon on Easter. And that's not the church Easter because that will be one day different than the full moon. But both of those days are critical. And all the way up to the summer solstice. So there it is, the lunatic moon and the sun. Cheers.